there has been a lot of interest and hype in the CPU scene over the last few weeks. Qualcomm recently presented their long-awaited, greatly improved PC CPU, the Snapdragon X Elite. It offers good performance and efficiency, but it's not the great revolution that many expected. It represents a significant step forward for Qualcomm, but the PC market is highly competitive, and the established players, Intel and AMD, have recently announced their newest mobile chips, Lunar Lake and StrixPoint. About 13 years ago, Intel was in a similar position. They showed off a new architecture, called Silvermont, with a focus on mobile products, hoping for a revolution, but it turned out to be one of many steps on the path of evolution. Today, I'm taking a look at a mini PC with a CPU from this generation. Let's dive in. Can you imagine your phone or tablet being powered by an Intel chip, the oh. same manufacturer as your laptop or desktop CPU? It's not science fiction because it happened some years ago. Intel Atom was the system on a chip platform designed by Intel for smartphones and tablets, and it launched in 2012, the same year that Gangnam Style became a viral sensation. The Intel Atom chips were based on the x86 instruction set, which has been the dominant architecture in the desktop PC market since the 1970s. On the other hand, ARM architecture was, and still is, dominant in smartphone products because it is more power efficient. But Intel decided to try to push x86 into mobile. Silvermont is a microarchitecture that was used in several Atom, Celeron and Pentium processors. It is a significant improvement over previous Atom architectures in terms of performance and efficiency. Prior to Silvermont, Intel's Atom processors struggled to compete with ARM-based processors dominant in mobile devices due to higher power consumption. While Silvermont improved performance and power efficiency, it wasn't a revolutionary leap that dethroned ARM. But Silvermont served as a stepping stone for Intel in the mobile arena, demonstrating a renewed focus on mobile efficiency and paving the way for future advancements in Intel's mobile processors. Silvermont found applications in low-power laptops, nettops, and even microservers, showcasing its versatility. This was possible due to more performance power, thanks to key improvements in the architecture. In the end, this smartphone venture by Intel failed, and because of that, there is no Intel chip in your Android or iPhone nowadays. The ARM architecture has hugely evolved in recent years in terms of performance too. The results can be seen in Apple Silicon M chips as well as Qualcomm X Elite, which are powering modern laptops. A few Android smartphones from Asus, Lenovo, Motorola, Acer and others were released with Intel Atom chips though. They will remain as small pieces of smartphone history. But our focus today is not on mobile phones and tablets. Gigabyte and other PC manufacturers decided to cram a small and efficient CPU into an ultra-compact PC design. And the main guest in this video is a Gigabyte Brix Mini PC. The Brix line represents the Mini PCs in Gigabyte's portfolio. Over the years, different Brix generations and designs have been introduced, but the hero in today's video is just one. This Brix Mini PC is powered by an Intel Celeron J1900 CPU, a low-power, budget-friendly processor released in 2013. The J1900 falls under the Celeron brand, which typically offers slightly more performance than Atom's. While the J1900 is not a top-of-the-line Celeron, it represents a shift towards better performance compared to older Atom's. The J1900 belongs to the Bay Trail D platform with a Silvermont architecture. While some Atom CPUs before had dual cores, the J1900 offers quad cores, providing better multitasking capabilities for desktop users. But what is more interesting, in my opinion, is the whole system on a chip TDP of 10 watts, combined with the architecture improvements. Silvermont introduced out-of-order execution, which allows the processor to execute instructions in a more efficient order, reducing stalls and improving performance. Silvermont has a more advanced branch prediction unit and increased instructions per clock too. The J1900's compact design made it an ideal choice for small form factor PCs and embedded systems. But how is the experience with the device nowadays? It's okay for office work for example, but certainly the power is not enough for something more demanding. 
The PC today is equipped with 8GB of DDR3 memory and a 128GB Samsung SSD. It's running Windows 10, for which, by the way, Microsoft will officially end support in October 2025. Keep this in mind. Browsing the internet is okay with this config, but it's certainly not a very snappy experience, especially if you're a multitasker. The integrated Intel HD graphics are just integrated graphics, quite weak and only enough for media playback and probably very old and light games. But thanks to the low power consumption, this chip does not need fans for cooling, which leads to quiet operation. Some motherboard manufacturers had released models with Intel J1900 and passive cooling. Years ago, I had built a computer for my sister with just such a motherboard, SSD, cheap case, and cheap power supply, and it was quite enough for her needs. Not that she had a choice though. For the mini PC today, Gigabyte requires a 30 watt power supply. This unit didn't come with one, so I bought a third party one. The power consumption when I'm watching a YouTube video is around 15 watts. This is for the mini PC with an Ethernet connection and one USB dongle for mouse and keyboard. I am not measuring the external HDMI display. In idle, the consumption is around 7, 8, 9 watts. I guess it might be even less with some Linux distribution. There is some room to upgrade this mini PC. The SSD and the Wi-Fi module can be upgraded with newer and faster ones. But the RAM slot is just one and the max memory size supported is just 8GB. These 8GB are neither much nor little considering the rest of the hardware isn't powerful by today's standards. I ran a few Cinebench benchmarks. They took a lot of time to complete. You can see the results and compare them if you like. I also tried to test Blender, but it wouldn't start. It needs better graphics card. But in my opinion, such a computer is ideal for some kind of Linux server. I am not sure about a heavy high-res multimedia crunching hub, but there are so many other kinds of servers to build. The fanless quiet operation and small footprint are very intriguing for home usage. Price is, of course, a very important factor. When was new, the pricing of this Gigabyte Bricks was around $170 for the bare bones model and around $400 with RAM and storage. A quick eBay search now gives me different prices depending on the configuration and whether a charger is included. But here's an example for $60. Other PCs with the same chip are available too, of course. Probably some are cheaper. Overall, the J1900 wasn't a direct replacement for every Atom CPU, but it did succeed the Atom line in offering a more powerful and efficient option in the low power budget PC segment. I like the chip and I plan to use it somehow in a home lab slash automation scenario. I just don't know how yet. The Intel Celeron J1900 was a popular low power processor and Intel has released several successors to it over the years. Some of them were minor updates, but some introduced bigger improvements, including higher clock speeds, more modern DDR4 memory, and architecture improvements in performance, power efficiency, and graphics capabilities. Nowadays, Intel processor N100 is very popular low-power, entry-level processor that is designed for use in budget-friendly or compact devices like mini PCs. One thing is certain, you have a choice of economical Atom processors. Whether it will be older, second-hand or new one, it depends on your needs and budget.